And for more, I want to bring in Elizabeth Schulze, senior Pentagon reporter Louis Martinez, and Patrick Rievel, live from Kiev, with more on this. Elizabeth, are, are Millie and Austin here giving a preview of President Biden's message when he travels to Poland next, next week to mark the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion? You know, Diane, this was a staunch uh, show of support for the U.S. standing with its, with its allies and providing whatever is needed for Ukraine as we look at this one-year mark. This really both, we heard Defense Secretary Austin and Joint Chiefs Chairman Milley make the case that the U.S. and its allies will continue doing what it takes when it comes to providing military aid and, and military equipment. And, of course, there were some specific questions about how far that's going to go. One of the questions the president recently got was, is the U.S. going to provide those F-6 fighter jets. Biden initially said no flatly, but we didn't hear uh, Secretary Austin comment any further on that today. And in addition to this kind of show of support from the allies, the president is still facing questions here politically about how much more aid he can face. So going to try to show that unity, no doubt about it, when he goes to Poland next week, while trying to make sure that he can still get the support that's needed from all of those NATO allies and here at home too, Diane. Louis, NATO countries are expressing concern at the gap, uh, Ukraine's need for ammunition versus the ability to keep up with it. Those numbers aren't matching up. So does the Pentagon have any plans to deal with the extra ammo being sent to Ukraine? Yeah, it does, Diane. The United States and the Allies are working on getting even more ammunition for those artillery howitzers that are proving crucial in that big fight. You heard General Milley there talk about how it's essentially a stalemate there in eastern Ukraine, particularly in this one town known as Bakhmut. The fighting there is described as very intense with very high numbers of casualties, particularly on the Russian side, full frontal assaults from the Russians, which are techniques that just aren't used in modern warfare. Um, this is a very symbolic place for both sides, and it's an artillery battle taking place all around that all around there all the time and that is expending a lot of artillery shells and there's essentially a shortfall now there the United States and other allies are seeing that their manufacturing probably won't be able to keep up with the need just think about this the United States has already provided in the last year alone 1 million uh, rounds of artillery shells for the fight and it's believed that the Ukrainians th uh, they launch maybe thousands of these a day the same for the Russians who have even more artillery so definitely Definitely a concern. And Patrick, we heard them saying, you know, this is a crucial moment for Ukraine. They're talking about this new offensive by Russia. What do we know about that offensive and how Ukraine's needs are likely to evolve with that? Yeah, Diane, I mean, essentially this offensive has already begun. The question now is simply how big it becomes. Right now we know that Russia is pouring more and more troops into eastern Ukraine, particularly around Bakhmut, and that the intensifying, uh, that the artillery strikes there are intensifying every day. I mean, as he was saying, as, as both of them were saying, uh, the Russians are using tactics where basically they're sending waves of people into frontal assaults supported by artillery. And the casualties out in Bakhmut that we are hearing are hundreds of people a day being killed, likely on both sides, but casualties particularly heavy on the Russian side. And really right now, as they said in this press conference, the U.S. And, and its allies are trying, along with Ukraine, to basically prepare for two challenges. One is to hold the line now, but also to prepare Ukraine for this counteroffensive in the spring. Louis Martinez, Elizabeth Schulze, Patrick Rieville, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.